Taylor Mint's fucking sock. Yo, guys, I just fucking bent my giant card. Looks like you're stuck with me. I didn't mean what I said. You know I love you. Baby, you know, you know I love you. I'm just kidding. You're the best card ever. Oh, so. Well, I don't think I'll ever be able to sell this card now. Uh, if you guys want to support me, uh, to go on www.trimgaming.com and pay for the mistake, I just I just damaged my wife, so I just damaged my giant card. So if you guys want to buy this new Bayless play mat, which is only available for the next 24 hours, 24 hours, get your Bayless mats now on www.trimgaming.com. Get these right now. These are the best mats of the game. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kawhi. I'll put you back where you belong. In the trash! When I was a kid, I learned that only two things are certain in life. Let's go! Let's go. <laughs> I randomly skip forward and the first thing he says is let's go. He is an actual ball. Taxes and that trip will always have a fresh fate, no matter what you think, nothing. There's one more thing that's for certain, and it's not death because pendulums never die, but it's that your Yu Gi Oh deck might be good one month, it might not be good the next month. So, as everyone knows, that played Splite, everyone knows it got the most beautiful Splite playmat in the history of mankind. That this guy right here, you see this guy, you see this samurai, this warning, this masterless warrior, gone forever. Like, you can't play him anymore. Like, you might as well. Uh, buy the sprite playmat right now and just cut this part off. Now there's two options as sprite players. Now as you guys know, I already moved on to tier limit. I ain't gonna cap, I already moved on to tier limit. I will always have love for my fucking homies. That's you guys. You guys are my homies! That was, I got you! So, what I did is I stayed up all night last night to develop the best way to play sprite. So if you play sprite this format, alright, fuck this thing. If you think I give a fuck about this- Claude is cool! Claude Mark, you're a pussy! I don't even like you! Slap that- I will tell you guys, the secret on how to beat this pussy little card. Yeah, enough fucking diddle daddle. Let's show you guys the best way to play Sprite this format. Now, one very important thing you guys need to know. Sprite, dude, Ron and Toad is gone. The Masterless Samurai is gone. So we gotta play it a little differently. Now listen to this whole video I have to tell you guys. Now you have two options really, okay? You could play Sprite like a fucking bozo with like the old way, or you have to revamp it entirely. So here's what I did. I had to two of the best players in the world. Paolo, the Brazilian Prince, and Pac, the Thai Master. And I combined both of their decks. They met up and had a baby. And now came Triff Gaming. This deck is the best way to play Sprite this format. You take the 19 hand trap shenanigans of Paolo. And you take the combo live twin of Pac. And combine it into the sexiest Sprite deck of all time. Ready? 17 hand trap, extreme amount of normal summon starters, live twin sprite with a whole different strategy of how to play the deck. And I truly believe with all my heart, this is the best way to play it. You know how before, now I'm going to show you guys some replays here, okay? Forget the, re watch the replays as I discuss how the deck works. So you play a fuck ton of hand traps and those are your interruptions. You don't need Toad anymore to use interruptions. You utilize the Sprite cards as your combo, as your plus, as your value. You use Gigantic Sprite to special your Sprites, nothing else. Like, and let your hand traps do the talking. Let your Live Twin start your whole combo. You want a Baylor, look at this value. One Live Twin card, I'm not going straight into my, my Link 2s and shit. No, the idea is that the Live Twins, if when you start, draw you three times. Frost will draw you one, and each of the Lilas will draw you another. And then your opponent will try and draw with you, but you can't, because you're going to 9-0 their ass, and they wish that they could draw with you, but they can't, because you're going to 15-0 them, because you're just better than all of them, because you listen to the best you can play in the planet in Triff Gaming. So that's the idea here, that all the live twins give you a plus, like they draw you three. So allow your hand traps to be your interruption. That's why you play 17 of them, and you don't play Imperm either, because well, I, at the moment, I think I test this Imperm in these next few matches, you're but a witness, but the idea of this deck is that simple. It's that allow your hand traps that you draw from the live twin to be your interruptions. Allow your spike cards to be your plus. So rather than Toad, like Toad is too, like the whole Toad stuff, it's too much. Like you can't just put in, Toad gave you a follow up and it gave you interruptions. You can't just insert a random fucking Iperia and hope that it'll solve all the deck's issues. Iperia is the same plus as the sprites. So the idea is just use the sprites as your plus and your value and how you gain advantage. Use the hand traps as interruptions and still use red and blue, sorry, red and carrot and the actual live twin interruptions and interruptions on top as like built in deck and uh, interruptions and just use this as value. 
Now, I'm going to Nibiru him, and there's just not much you could do. Like, even the hand traps alone will just win your games because you're playing 17. This is where the Imperm came up. Like, But the reason why Imperm's not crazy in this version is because uh, you draw two times on the opponent's turn, and you cannot use the Imperm on your opponent's turn with the field. So, you look at a hand like this, right? Sadly, we have one, one hand trap. That's what like, we're... I, I, post side deck, I think you have 21 hand traps out of 40. So, sadly... But instead of just random sprite cards that do nothing, you have a bunch of live twins in conjunction with the sprite. So it's like a beautiful combination of sexiness. Yes, this Dita would have been nice earlier. Uh, so at this point, I'm a, I get hit with Sanctum. Like, dude, we're actually clearing this whole board. So if there's no Sanctum here, and another beauty of this deck is that you side into 10 traps. Because you main deck like 20 hand traps, you side into 10, hand, 10 tra actual traps like Sanctum, and you're able to pop your own sight. So I understand that Yu-Gi-Oh! did not ban Scythe. So let's take advantage of the Scythe, right? Uh, so in this scenario, we get hit with Scythe. Uh, sadly, dude, this is actually so unfortunate because if there's no scythe, uh, we literally just uh, climb into da uh, downer and just Zeus everything, and then we continue playing afterwards. So uh, it's a little unfortunate. Uh, also, because Secret Pastor gets a quick play spell, uh, I'll show you guys what I. There it is, Live Twin Home. So a beauty of this deck that I think Pax version didn't really. Uh, Pax one of the best players in the world. That's my fucking homie. Uh, but he doesn't play Laptone Home. Now, the reason why Laptone Home is so good, it makes Secret Password turn into Sunny, uh, like the Sunny Snitch card, the continuous spell, or Laptone Home. So Secret Password turns into a normal summon, an extender, or a full-on extender that you don't even need monsters for. So when your opponent thinks that he just cleared the whole board, you just hit him with a Laptone Home and you get the full combo. And all you need to do is just play one Laptone Home, because one Laptone Home is, you actually play three because Secret Password. I'll show you guys the list afterwards, you guys will get what I'm saying. It's a plethora of summons, extenders, and hand traps. And this is why this is just so powerful, is that you're able to look at everything that he has, and there's just no way that he's going to win this. If you look at his hand, there's nothing he can do whatsoever. Uh, and then we summon this out, and I'm going to actually pop my own live twin to go to pop, get a value from his, and that's just game. So we're going to go into another game here, and just to show you guys more how good this deck is, it actually just cannot fucking lose. So this is another example where you have double hand trap, and you have extenders for days. So it's like there's no hand trap, he can have double hand trap and still lose here. Because of how good this deck is. And even if we went second, we have double hand trap. Plus, we were drawing a six card for turn. So, uh, this is just insane. Like, it, it's, it could go so well. It, uh, it just doesn't lose. And they get free value there. Free plus. And that's what the whole idea of this deck. We're going to be safe here some of this instead. The whole idea of this deck is that let your hand traps be the interruptions. You're going to have sprites and live tunes interruptions on top. And look, I think we're going to have six cards for my turn. Like, it's so much free value. Now, our, our, our card was hit with uh, hand trap. But we're going to do a cool play here where just get the free thing. Boom. Effect just for cost. And then we're going to use Zilla to kiss a kill to draw one for free. I uh, have five cards in my hand, bro. Like, I got free. Elf, blue. Look, like, we're going set. We're playing on our opponent's turn so much because that's just the value of what these cards do. We drew three. With one live twin, you draw three. We have six cards in our fucking hand. So I could freely Nibiru at any moment I want. I have Valor and Quirrell, and I have Sprites to follow up. So I'm going to literally let him Zeus me. I don't care. And I'm going to wait for him to, to put some more cards in the field. Uh, at this point, I'm just like, yo, there's no shot you can win this. I show him my hand. I'm like, this is impossible for you to win. And that's the beauty of this. That even if they have Dark Ruler, they have Super Poly. It doesn't matter what hand trap, what, what spells they have. doesn't matter or anything. And on top of that, the deck does not play many spells. And they're never going to resolve Eradicated because you have a bunch of hand traps. So now we're going second. And again, this is insane. We're playing 20 hand traps. We only see one. So this is why you need to play as, f as many hand traps as humanly possible because one by itself is weak as shit. But when you combine two together, they're actually extremely powerful. So this is why you need to play 15 plus hand traps or play zero. Uh, but if you play against a deck like Tealament where there's just simple uh, standalone value and stopping Kalos by itself. So that's also fine on its own. He's playing a version where just uh, some swap swaps with no Ron and Toad. I think that's massive copium. And on this, again, another Sanctum. You, know, you can't do any much to that. But now I guess it's my turn to Sanctum him. Uh, so here, dude, same thing. Like, look, it's just too powerful. Even if you just draw the Frost, which is the one you don't want to open, it's still fine. I make the conscious decision here not to stop his Ash Blossom in case he another Hand Trap. Because I know that this is plenty of interruptions by itself. Uh, he's going to opt to Imperm and then Lightning Storm. I'm just going to set up another Elf here. And this is nothing you can do. That's just game for us. Uh, get starter, carry, and that is game. This deck's absolutely insane, gentlemen. So the idea of this deck, like I said, you combine the idea that you play a fuck ton of hand traps, but with more summons, more starters. But they're not just starters that brick you. This is the deck list, and this is the deck list. So the idea of this, I'll explain all the ratios. They're planned very specifically, and I've had a lot of testing with this deck. So there's a reason why there's no Imperm in the main deck and stuff like that. 
the reason why there's two of these and three of Warner, I'll explain everything, so pay close attention. So the reasoning behind this that makes it so powerful is like, if you look at the top 20 cards, all 20 are actual one card starters, like literally one card starters. So you can't really brick. I understand blue and jet need another level two to be a starter. But I mean, when you play 23 level twos, you are bound to draw one of them. So mathematically, they are just a starter on its own. So you have 20 and you're still playing 16 hand traps, which is an absurd amount. You could arguably play more. I was diddle daddling with not playing prosperity, but prosperity is just overall too powerful. But you do draw one on your turn. So you just opt not to do that one. Or you, if you have a combo already, you just save the prosperity for the follow up, which is why two prosperity and inserting two imperm might even be better. Uh, the reason behind doing something like this is imperm. Look, I know, like you. You need at least two imperm in the deck because of trap trick. Okay, so you need at least two imperm. So you can't just play zero. Post side when trap tricks in, you want at least two imperm for this specific purpose. That there are scenarios where you want to trap trick into an imperm and cards like mourner ash blossom and ghost ogre ash blossom is not good this format man it's not before where ash blossom just fucking you ash blossom future destiny and you just win the duel it's not like that this format like ash blossom is literally the worst hand trap out of all of these hand traps here except maybe ghost ogre ghost ogre is like not that great against, against team limit but dd crow loses its value against uh, without ron and toad ghost mourner is by far the best hand trap out of them because if you like ghost mourner is a, but again it's a hard one to return so that's the thing when you're drawing three times like you're bound to draw double hand traps and you want all your hand traps to be playable. So in my opinion, and, I, and two prosperity is weird, but it's like in Sky Striker, right? And you play two prosperity because in Sky Striker, you are never resolving the second prosperity because they have engaged draws, upstart draws, etc. So in this, you are drawing one every time with the live twin. So it's debatable to not even play the prosperity at all, but you do want to see your combo. So I'm going to opt the best option here is to play two prosperity that's in my opinion going to be the best option here it's not crazy like it's not an absurdly broken card and you want to see your maximum amount of hand traps now over here you have 19 starters so this in my opinion would be the best you would take out the imperm here and you would choose your choice of hand traps 17 hand traps might even be the highest amount you're choosing to play going second so in this regard you could have more stuff for going against mystic mind nonsense like you could play this you could play second smashers which probably should be the call and then just like a duster and for a third sanctum because sanctum and this deck going first is insane because you could just pop your own scythe if you hard draw it so something like this uh, looks uh, a lot better in my opinion uh ultimately uh the reason why it's so powerful is you want to play lilla over the kiss a kill because lilla will get your kiss a kill frost okay this is why this engine is so powerful that you're gonna draw with your kiss or kiss a kill once on your turn once on the opponent's turn and with your kiss a kill frost so that's three draws for one. The reason why I like Live Twin Home is that Secret Password, you're now basically playing three Sunny Snitch and three Live Twin Home, as opposed to playing like one or two Sunny Snitch. So you have the option now. Do you want Sunny Snitch or do you want Live Twin Home? If for some weird ass reason they hand trap the Lilla, you go into Sunny Snitch to search to Kiss Kill Frost, vice versa. And Live Twin Home is an extender that you save from the very, 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 very end, that if they opt to, to stop all your plays, you don't need like a level two in the field. That's what, why Live Twin Home is really nice for that purpose. And to get rid of your extra cards are relevant because you're drawing three times with this engine. So it's, it's worth the, the discard. So having just the one is very powerful for this purpose. Uh, and yeah, and then the full combo, the full sprites, one of everything, and then as many hand traps as possible. And you don't want too many imperms. Like the only reason there's even imperm whatsoever is because it's trap trick. If I didn't decide to play trap trick, I would actually just remove imperm imp entirely because I'm telling, yes, going second, it's nice, but you going first, imperm, like you, the reason why the hand traps are so powerful is that you draw two times on the opponent's turn. So it's going to be in, like, you'll see how it feels when you hard draw an imperm. At that point, it's not even a hand trap. It's a, spe it's a spell interruption, like a forbidden chalice, where it's not, it cannot be used in conjunction with your hand traps. And in this deck, the idea, the logic is that we're going to use the sprite cards as, as, as value and advantage and use the hand traps as our actual interruptions. You're searching for a starter a lot more than you're searching smashers. You want the sprite engine to keep going, going, going forever and ever and ever. Uh, while the hand traps with, with red and carrot and perhaps a live twin link to be the interruptions with like three hand traps. You're drawing so many times in the turn. So obviously if you if you have if you don't if you drew all combo pieces, you opt to go for the mascarena over like the other stuff, you opt to go for more interruptions. But if you play this deck perfectly, it's very difficult to lose. Uh, and this is why the side deck over here, you still have six cards for Mist actually nine cards for Mystic Mine, because Trap Trick can still get Eradicator, and you just like get it and obliterate them. Use your, your traps and spells, Mystic Mine outs combined in one turn. Don't just use one, use like two, wait until you have two or three and then use them. 
And uh, yeah, th that's the idea of the deck. And going first, you side in these 11 cards. So despite having like a go second orientated deck with 17 hand traps, you're still opting to go first. But a sixth card does help the deck a lot because you are playing 17 hand traps. Like 18 cards are not, like Smashers doesn't help you for your combo. You have really only 22 combo cards, which is all you need. And yeah, when you side in all these go first cards, like what's Tier Limit doing when you have all when you have all of those in? Uh, like what could Tier Limit possibly do when you have the, all this set up? Look at this. Like what could Tier Limit possibly do when you have literally all of this? I'd even, no, I wouldn't even play the Smashers. And you just put in the, the hand trap, oh yeah, keep it in Nibiru, it destroys Tier Limit. Uh, like just the cards that are absurdly, absurdly good. I think just these and DD Chrome, to be honest. Uh, like just the ones that are absurdly powerful against them, something like this. Like look, even DD go maybe one maybe a row. boom. Like how could they win when you have all of these traps? Like you have even hard drawing scythe is scythe combo because of the live twin. You have thirteen cards that are auto win against that deck, and same goes for basically any combo deck. Like. D barrier will still hold more value than a Veiler against a, a Sprite deck with Eradicator as well to get rid of any possible spells. And it's just a fr completely free Eradicator. Uh, and dude, like going first, how does anyone beat this? And then going second, how does anyone beat when you have literally every hand trap in Yu-Gi-Oh history in your deck? Like, you guys get what I'm saying? Now, how does someone beat this with this 17 hand trap going second? And like, yeah, like, even if you want to play more hand traps going second, it's still fair. Like it's, the argument can be had to play more hand traps. Uh, you could play a third of, of the other hand traps that you're not playing, like like Ash, Mourner, Imperm. And then going second, like, I guess you could just remove this. You could remove this. And you could side out going second. Nah, Live Tournament was too good. Like it's tough to side out. Like I side out Smashes going second a lot. I don't like it going second at all. I'd side out a Carrot and probably a live twin home because a lot of our cards will be hand traps so we won't have too much of a hand so you can do something like this if you want to side in more hand traps like who's doing anything against 20 hand traps and over here if you look at this carefully you have 17 starters or 18 starters this actually looks insane 20 hand traps 18 like one card starters <laughs> this deck's absolutely insane so uh, this is like an in-depth profile for you guys. And the extra deck, triple split elf, dark, mascarina, cerberus. You don't really need a unicorn. I mean, you could have it because access code, but the extra deck is tight. D double, kiss skill, one lila, access code, double jade, exploit, magic, and gets insane in the deck down and then Zeus. That's insane. You guys do with this information as you guys will. I uh, will be doing real life duels with this. I'll be taking this to locals plenty. And if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to smash the subscribe special like button. Make sure to get your beautiful spite playmats and Vaylance playmats down in the description. I love you guys. See you guys next video. Peace.